they can't shapeshift into Jesus, which I'm not really sure why, because they're you know, a Muslim entity, or at least stemming so, from... as I understand it, Jesus is in the Quran. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Th- th- that's something I don't know. I think... I believe that is true. I am at, and someone please write into the show and correct me if I'm wrong about this. I, I yeah, I could very well be wrong about this because I I'm pretty sure that he is because uh, when we were growing up, the neighbors across the street they were from um, Algeria, and like their daughter and I, we were like the same age. We hung out all the time, and I remember them saying that that like Jesus is like in their religion, but he's not like the main guy. You know what I mean? Interesting. It'd be like okay. if there was another religion somewhere else in the world where like the disciple Paul was like the big guy. You know what? Does that make sense? Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's true. I could be really wrong on that. I, I'm don't. This is not. <laughs> I'm trying to I mean, be it, would, it would it would make sense why they wouldn't be able to shape shift into him then because I mean it they can't do. Jesus apparently uh, also angels or wolves for wolves. some reason. Yeah, wolves. Um, which is what yeah, – that's that's an interesting part of that because I, that, it doesn't seem to tie into anything religious. So I, I'm not really sure why they wouldn't be able to. It's, so, it's interesting to think about that. Yeah, so I found some stuff on that too. And I believe it was because they said that the wolves could go after the jinn and find the jinn. And so oh. that's why they – like the wolves were hunters of them. So that's why they couldn't shapeshift into that. But they often shapeshift into black dogs. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Also camels and uh, snakes. Yeah, which is – snakes is the big one. I feel like everyone right. should really watch out for snakes. Uh, I mean snakes are, are generally something I avoid outside for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we all should be avoiding them more. You know, I, I think <laughs> I really do. Like, I, I like snakes. I'm in, like, you know, I, I love all animals and like, I'm really into nature. But like, you know, spooky <laughs> things are always snakes for a reason. And I think we should all just like stop getting snakes as pets. Stop playing around with snakes. I That's how I feel. Like they're cool out in nature, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that will disagree with you. But I'm on I'm on your side. I I, mean, I don't for, do reptiles. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a vegan, and I like other reptiles. Like, I'm down, but like, I don't know. I just feel snakes are kind of weird. I don't know. I just be careful with what. Well, if you want to get the rest of the audience back on your boat, yeah. um, <laughs> apparently, Jin can also they can also ship shape and shape shift into spiders. So Ooh. I don't know very many people that like spiders. So let's just stay away from spiders and snakes. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, don't kill them, but like, no, let the, let, if they're in your house, all right, if they're in your house, do the cup, do the piece of paper under the cup, take them outside. What we're saying is don't like bring them into your house. How's that? Does that make right. sense? Okay, well, let's go with that. That's that's how I feel. That's my paranoid vegan opinion. That's on... your <laughs> daily message from the ASPCA. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, they can kind of manifest into just about everything. As we were saying, they have the zoomorphic manifestations. So there are several different types of jinn. Generally, they almost like levels of strength. The most powerful ones are black, black jinn. They're generally known as the king of the, the jinn world. And I have, you know, I have the names of all of these levels and I'm going to try my best but I'm going to butcher all of them. I already know that. But the black jinn are generally called Shamir. Sh- Shamir. Probably Shamir. Okay. So, and also red jinn. Red jinn are very old and powerful. They're the second ones below black jinn. They worship Iblis and they, Iblis is the head jinn, kind of like uh, Lucifer with demons. Um, and they, their ultimate goal is to destroy humanity, as are most jinn. They were once blue jinn and they, broke away from the class system, becoming kind of like rebellious almost. And they're, they are called Shiatin and Ifrit. So those are two different names for the red gen. Like I said, I'm butchering all of these. The next level down is blue gen. They are pretty powerful as well. They're considered almost like the elders and clan leaders of the jinn world. They have little to no interaction with humans. I would I would consider them more like managers, upper upper level managers of the jinn world. So they they generally don't interact with humans very much. Humans interact with much lower level jinn more often than not. And the blue jinn are generally called marit, mar, marid, 
Marid, Necrotil, and Afrit. I am doing my best, mm. ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I think you're doing a great uh, job. I hope so. Just say it with confidence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next level down is Yellow Jin. They are kind of like middle-aged Jin with, with a considerable amount of power. Um, they're the family leaders of the Jin world, and they g- generally don't have any interest in humans or the physical world, but they do share the general want and need of Jin of destroying humans. But they're just kind of like not interested in it at that level for some reason. And they're called the Ifriti. And then you've got the green Jin, who are the most common. They're the youngest and least powerful of all Jin. They're very curious about humans, and they like to interact with us in our world. These are the more like trickster Jin that we encounter, as well as the ones that, we, as we have already heard, they're stories of people falling in love with Jin. Mm-hmm. These are generally level, generally green gin that that we encounter with, and they like to play pranks on humans. They and almost they kind have... of remind me of like fairies. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you know, like like not how we think of them now, but like the original fairies, like like really like tricky and right, always trying to get one over on you. It reminds me of. I mean, I'm a big Marvel fan, so it almost reminds me. Well, I guess it's technically Greek mythology too, but uh, Loki. Where Loki is like the god of of trickery and and all mm. that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's kind of like that. Um, but they're also the, generally the most annoying because that's like I said, the green gin are what we deal with as humans the most, which is probably a good thing because they are the least powerful. Yeah. But they do have several different names. They're gonna call. Oh boy, they are called Aranam, Kukas, Amar, Arwa. John and Amir, so, th- so they have all different kinds of names. Uh, but those are the those are the levels of Jin. Uh, just to recap, from strongest to weakest, it's the black Jin, the red Jin, the blue Jin, the yellow Jin, and then the green Jin. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Did you say one of those names was John? It, it it's it's kind of looks like John. It's J A N N. Oh, okay. John. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I butchered the name. Don't worry. No, you did great. <laughs> all right so yeah that's all about the gin now we know a little bit more about them now let's get to the yeah. good part let's hear some stories we'll actually yeah, found I've a whole a bunch f- yeah I've, I've got quite a few so these are pretty short stories but they're all i like these stories because they're relatable they're very short but they're not they're not like movie stories they're not big flashy made-up stories they're just probably the most common stories where it's just something weird happens and that's just the story that you have. I'm going to read a couple of these off. The first one here says, one time my mother-in-law was sitting in her bed. She looked over and saw a woman sitting in a chair next to her bed with long pointy fingers and a face with very sharp angles. She was so frustrated and annoyed with the gin that they see a lot in their house and they are no longer afraid, just really annoyed by them. That she reached out and grabbed the gin by its wrist. She yelled, get out. I'm tired of you. Get out. Uh-oh. It tried to pull away and its wrist. I'm sorry. It tried to pull its wrist away and eventually tried to bite her hand because she wouldn't let it go. She pulled her hand away before it bit her and then the gin vanished. And that's the end of that one. So that Ooh. that was quite the interesting uh, story. That is. That's bold. I, that is bold. Yeah. To to have to be so sick of gin to have them in your house so much to to just basically yell at it yeah but I, I guess I guess I it guess worked. we're learning that that's effective yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I don't think I'd, I'd have the uh, the strength to uh, to just yell at a gin like that I'd have uh, there would have to be a lot of them and they'd have to really be getting under my skin yeah I, I mean I guess they were at that point so yeah I, I guess I can't blame them. All right, so our second story of the night, this one says, there was a man who went to his village, Mashid. Wow, I think I nailed that one, Mashid. Yeah, that sounds, I'm proud of that myself sounds good. That sounds really good. <laughs> there was a man who went to his village, Mashid, to pray Fajir every morning. The Mashid is on a dirt road, and the front door leads directly into the prayer area. One morning, when he went to pray, he found no one else there, so he prayed by himself at the front of the room. While he was praying, he undoubtedly felt, quote-unquote, a presence behind him, as if there were people standing behind him. 
Furthermore, he felt as if there was a bright light shining behind him. After his prayer, he quickly turned around to find the room was empty, just as he entered it. That same day, he ran into a friend of his and was like, hey, I saw there was a huge turnout at, at Fajar today. I walked by the machine and through the front door, I could see rows and rows of men all dressed in white. That's the end of that one, which is Ooh. really, that's really interesting. Yeah. To have, especially if there's that many where, to the point where there's tons and tons of people in there. That's a lot of gin at one po- in one place. That is. Yeah, that is interesting. Hmm. It makes you wonder why why they would even gather in that one spot. Right. That's what I was thinking of. Like, what, what reason would they have to all be there? Oh. All right, the next story starts uh, when I was little in Sudan. My family had a farm, and it was a very special place to me. But this farm, wonderful as it was, was terrifying at night. That might have something to do with the fact that the farm is between the Nile and a graveyard. Ooh. And one day, as we were pulling up to the farm, I saw a fire that was the size of a person. That is to say, a fire that was exactly the size of a human being from far away from the farmhouse, and there was no smoke. Casually, I watched this fire take a few steps to the left while nothing else caught on fire, and it would then vanish. You might say that I had an overactive imagination as a 10-year-old, but I would say you are incorrect because I remember it incredibly vividly. I told my mom, I told my dad, and one of them casually mentioned that I might have seen a gym. Wow. That one uh, is scary. That one, that's my favorite one. Well, also my least favorite one because that is terrifying that is really really spooky that is so spooky because I, I can like envision what that would look like too you know what i mean like that's horrifying to just like walk out and see like a fire person oh a giant smokeless fire person. that's the thing it's smokeless fire it's not like a person on fire it's like a just right. like a fire person like that is horrifying especially as a 10 year old i couldn't imagine seeing something like that at 10 yeah but at the same time i feel like kids always see more it's like they're like more open and then to have your parents one of your parents i like how they didn't mention who 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 it was it was dad mentioned it you know it was dad (laughs) it was probably dad (laughs) yes probably dad but they casually say that oh yeah it might have been a gym yeah it might have been a gym Ah, don't worry about it don't worry about it go back outside (laughs) all right so our next story it says, when I started writing about gins, I would have these very interesting, vivid, imaginary encounters with gins. I was just about to move to Egypt, and I had this small room in which I had a large desk, which was too large for the room, and a bed. And in order to get to bed, I had to push the desk chair all the way under the desk because there wasn't enough room for me to get in and out otherwise. So one night, I had gone to sleep and sort of half woke because... I thought I had heard somebody clearing their throat or moving something. And there in the desk chair staring at me was this guy, this man with scraggly long hair and these extremely intense eyes. And he was just looking, looking. As I sat straight up there in bed and screamed, as one might, naturally, you know how the story ends. There was nothing there, of course. The interesting thing and the reason why this stuck with me in a way that most dreams I had as a kid did not was because because the chair that I had to push all the way under the desk in order to get into the bed had been pulled out and was facing the bed when I woke up. Ooh, that's a spooky story. That, I like that story. That's pretty significant. I like that one a lot. That's a good one. That's like that's your classic also, story. I like it. You get a lot of that with ghosts where you, you feel like you're having a dream and then you wake up, but something in the room is altered yeah. the same way that you saw it in your <laughs> dream. Kind of just. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Whew. Oh, sorry, someone. <laughs> oh, you okay? I'm fine. Yeah, no, I. Someone's put a note on our door here at the studio, and I, all of a sudden, something looked like it was coming at me. I'm so sorry. I really apologize. <laughs> Yeah, these stories are really getting to oh. me. All right, let's do let's do one more gin story. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so our last story of the night. Um, this one says, uh, six years ago, we moved houses and everything was fine until we stupidly got out the Ouija board. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. 
good. I hope this is a good 